Hi everyone. Um, as well as the uh, Woodlaw clone knife that I'm making, um, I'm also making a new sheath to replace this one for a Bark River knife. And um, I'll show you why in a minute. Hold on a second. I just wet formed this last night and it's dry now so I want to dye it. Uh, so I'll get that over and done with now and then I'll go through the reason why there's a new sheath being made. Now when you add dye to the inside, um, what's called the flesh side of the leather, it has a tendency to stiffen it. But um, that's okay, because um, we don't want too much flex in this leather anyway. I just got to make sure that um, the area that I'm covering is only where the actual knife is. I don't want to put too much near where the glue is going to go. Actually, I don't want to put any of it near where the glue is going to go. So that looks about right. Let's see. It's going to be glued along here and there. This is a really dark brown. Do is get a new sponge. Sponge meaning this. I don't actually know what they're called, I just call it a sponge because it soaks up the dye. But the thing is, I trim this to get into fine areas. So I think I need a proper round one. Just like that. So much easier. do for now. Um, that's not going to stand up, that's going to fall down, I know it. At 
leave that to dry overnight. Come back to it tomorrow. Alright, I'll be right back. Just gotta wash these. Alright, now this is the reason why my friend up north wants a new sheath for his Bark River, which is actually a really nice knife. I think I might get one to add to the collection. Um, Alright, uh, it's pretty dark in here, so I've got my quig lights here. Hopefully that'll shed a little bit more light on, on the subject. Okay, now, it's a nice looking sheath, isn't it? As you see, good quality leather, well made. You think. When I first saw it, I went, oh, that's nice. Nice design. Yeah, it looks good. But um, as I looked closer, I realized why why Miss Sizer Adventurer wants a new sheath. So it's got a snap closure here, which is no big deal. You know, a lot of knife sheaths have that. I personally don't like them because, you know, as you pull the knife blade out, it has a tendency to want to cut into the leather. Um, but the first thing that I spotted, which I was told the problems with this, but um, personally, once I picked it up and I examined it, I realised that is a big problem. Looks nice from the front, and when you turn around, you see these recessed areas here. That strap is actually part of the leather on the back, which makes sense, you know, it's good, you don't have to worry about stitching something on. Um, but the problem is, it means the back strap doesn't have much support. It's only got this little bit here. So for something that's a couple of inches wide, you've only got maybe two thirds of an inch of support just there in that neck. And the front piece, it's the same. It's the same in there. So it has an inherent weak spot. So that's issue number one. After a bit of wear and tear, a bit of use as the leather gets softer, that is, I guarantee you, that will start to rip. Leather does rip eventually. Okay, next problem. I was looking at the strap. Okay, the strap, no, nothing wrong with that. It's got a groove cut in it here, but that groove does not go all the way through, so it's one piece still. That's more of a design, more of a design thing. So I'm looking at the belt loop itself. Nice, wide, big belt loop. Um, will fit the military style belts quite easily, but it's actually almost twice the width of a military belt. So it's almost three times the width of a standard um, dress belt. So if you've got this on your belt, so this is your belt here. You've got a knife in a sheath, you go to pull the knife out. You've got all of that movement. Some people might not think that's a problem. Other people may think it's a big problem. Um, even with an extremely wide belt, now this is not something that you'd actually wear, but extremely wide belt, you've still got a fair bit of movement. I mean that's fine, you'll always get movement on, on something unless it's specifically made for a size. So yep, and also the fact that it's just stitched here rather than being a single piece wrap around. A single piece wrap around will always outdo stitching. Okay, 
Then, this knife has now got um, tape on it to protect the blade and also so I don't cut myself. Putting the knife in, straight away I see an issue here. Now I'm going to move the camera a little closer so you can see. Okay, there we go guys. I've used my two quig lights as uh, lighting on my tripod. They actually support it on the tripod. Okay, now, like I said before, this has issues. Now, you'd think it sits in the sheath like that, but it doesn't. Because of the way that recess has been cut, it's pushed that lip is too far, as you're looking at it, that lip is too far um, to the left. Because if that's lined up perfectly in the middle, give you an idea, that is the lip there. That's where it should be, resting up against that. And that's where it is. As you can see, it's about half a centimeter across. So that is one issue that actually pushes pushes the knife that direction. As a result, it has sliced through the leather where this metal stud is. So already, this is this knife has not even been used. It's only a few weeks old, from what I understand. It's already cut open the sheath. Another thing is a perfect example if I grip like that and pull it out, cut myself. Another thing inside, um, what can I use as a pointer? Um, Okay, inside you've got the back strap for the sheath, the front, and then the divider in the middle. You need a divider so that the blade, um, if it rubs against leather, will rub up against that and not between these two and up into the stitching. Now, this side, it's okay. On that side, as you can see here, there's a little tiny lip down here. See that? That's pushing the knife this direction again. The same as with this. So when I'm putting the blade in, and especially when you come to here, where the little thumb ramp is, where the jimping is, it pushes it that way. And that is what's caused it to cut through this sheath. Now that's not it, there's more. Okay, the stitching. The stitching on this is really nice, it's well done, but it's done by machine. And as you see here, the leather has been marked by the sewing machine. And along there. It's not all that bad because of the, st the studded marks on it actually kind of match the stitching. So at first glance, you may not even notice it. But personally, I don't like that. Now, another problem. These steel rivets, these tubular rivets here, they've been pushed in and then the edges have been rolled over. So it's holding the leather tight, really, really tight, which is good. It's good quality. They, they will not go anywhere. Only one problem. Something like here, it's held it just a little bit too tight. You have got the two straps from the belt loop 
the outer piece of leather, the spacer in the middle, plus a wedge spacer. Now you need this wedge spacer for this design to bring the knife handle away from that so it doesn't rub. So you need that ledge for the handle materials to rest on. Problem is, right here where they all meet, they've crimped it in just a little too tight. And already I can see that that is going to wear down over time and possibly at the back as well, but more so in the front. Um, the drain hole at the bottom is pretty good, it does what it's supposed to. But overall, the design of it, it looks nice. But personally, I think it's a waste of leather. You've got all this good quality leather here and this sheath is almost useless. So they spent a lot of time on the Bark River knife. Good quality handles, nice pins, nicely polished, nice lanyard hole, great Coke bottle design handle. As you see it's shaped like a Coke bottle. Um, great blade, good to use and it just will not fit in to that properly. Oh, there's a moth just flew past. I mean, it retains it like a rock, but what's the point if you can't actually use it? Now, another thing. What about this blade looks slightly different? If you go on to the internet and you do, say, a Google image search for this model Bark River, um, what's different about it? The thumb ramp, the jimping, I'll insert a photo here. This is what it used to look like. This is what it looks like now. The reason for that, on the new sheath, if it's going to be sticking out that much, it's going to cause problems when sliding in and out of the sheath. Because the back of the blade is going to be that far away from the leather. And at first you think, oh yeah, it's got good good area for, for your thumb. But that sharp point, trust me, sooner or later it's going to get on your nose. If you want to do a reverse hand grip, if you want to put your thumb up like that, that sharp point, it's going to get in the way. Now this is just my personal opinion. You can do all sorts of grips, all sorts of cuts, but you rarely do you actually use this sort of bushcraft knife with your thumb sitting just like that. Because if you do, all of this is open. And if it's not open, that means you're holding it too far up, which means you've got space there and you want a good grip. So if you're holding with your fingers and your thumb there, you got all that space. You want to be able to hold it like this, maybe have your thumb up here, maybe have your thumb... I just saw a mouse. Kid you not. Hmm. Um, I think this place is alive tonight. There's a mouse, there's a moth flying past. So what I did this afternoon, I just reprofiled that, I ground it down, rounded it off. So you still have the jimping that will catch you, but it's still smooth, so it'll rub up against the leather without causing damage, and it's nicely rounded off. So you still got a little bit of a hump, just there. But, um, yeah. Not much of an issue. Still has the same, similar sort of look, but I personally think it's much better. That's why when I make my knives, it is completely flat along here.
All right. That's it for now, guys. So, Mr. Aussie Adventurer, your sheath is now underway. Just as a comparison, here is my Bushmaster. Needs a bit of a clean. It's about one and a half, maybe 12 millimeters longer than my Bushmaster. The handle is small, is larger, but that's actually the handle scale going all the way down. With mine, it stops there. Um, the Ricasso area. I guess you could line it up there. The Ricasso area on mine is slightly larger, this is smaller. Um, this is more of a f almost like a convex flat grind, and that's a Scandi grind which has been convexed. Single piece handle scale, handle scale, and front guard or bolster. It's all personal design, personal taste, I mean that's why everything comes in different colours. That's why you can get a blue pen or a red pen, you know, a silver car or a black car, whichever you prefer. And again, the Coke bottle handle design. It's a lot more prominent on mine than it is on the Bark River. I've got more of a grip down the bottom here and the Bark River is a lot smoother. Actually here's a question for you, for Aussie Adventurer. Which would you prefer, a grip one like this or a smooth one like that? Because that is easy to pull out. This one would be two, but you know, obviously it's a little bit smoother. So of the two handle designs at the end, which would you prefer? The Bushmaster style or the Bark River style? Okay guys, that really is it. I got a, other stuff to do. So thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.